Hello everybody, this is D.H. Thorne. So what'd you think of that uh, little ad video I just made? Not too bad, right? Well, as you can tell, the wait's over. My book is finally ready. As of just now, I clicked the button to publish the book, and unless there is any uh, problems with it, it will be live within 72 hours. So by the time you're watching this, the book should be available, and the link to it should be in the description. So I wanted to... Um, really give you guys a short but good video describing what this book is really going to be for, what it's going, who it's going to be for, and who it's going to appeal to, and why you should buy it. It's a little bit of a sales pitch, but uh, if you guys don't mind, hopefully you'll find it interesting. So here's a copy of the book. I entitled it Become the Maelstrom, which when you read the book will kind of make uh, a little bit of extra sense. It's based upon this idea that you are the void. You are a divinity. You are divinity itself already. That you're experiencing life as a mortal human being because that's what's enjoyable to you. That this is kind of a delusion and, and an illusion. And it's not something that you need to rid yourself of. It's that you are allowed to enjoy it in whatever capacity you wish. And one of those ways to enjoy it is, of course, to learn and become capable of using magic and dark mysticism to know yourself and experience a much more interesting life, a much more fulfilling life, or at the very least, entertain yourself better with what you're doing. So this book is mainly made for neophytes and people who are new to this idea that you are a divinity, who would like to have my personal perspective on it and how it works for me. Um, the book is divided into three primary sections. There is the foundation, the methodology, and the pathworking section. The foundation section is several long essays and treatises on the nature of non-duality, the nature of the trinity of self, which is this symbol behind me, which I use in all of my magic ritual pretty much, as well as why magic can work in a modern world of, you know, stark uh, uh, skepticism that has been proven right time and time again against us, and how important it is to work with other entities besides yourself, even though I am a firm believer that we are all one and all of us are the same ultimate divinity, these other entities are guides and they are, they are other versions of what you are that maybe are a little further down the path or maybe went off in a different direction of the path and they have a way of describing, explaining and helping you learn various techniques in magic and perspectives in mysticism that you might not have had before. So the whole purpose of this book is to ground you in this idea so that you are liberated from the dogma of religion and faith in such a way that you can work with any spirit that you wish. It's sort of a little bit like chaos magic in that regard, if those of you who are not familiar with it. Chaos magic is a non-dogmatic non tradition uh, stemming back from uh, the early 19th or 20th century. And the idea is to make use of various things to help you engage your spiritual consciousness to to work magic through gnosis uh, and states uh, and altered states of consciousness so then we get to the method section of the book the methodology section is basically all of the things that the grimoires that you may already be aware of do not teach you none of the grimoires that you'll pick up really ever explain to you ways of manipulating and augmenting and moving energy and astral visions and all this other stuff. In fact, this is either because they didn't know that or because this information was something that was already known to those who practice magic and they didn't need to be taught that. It's kind of like, um, it was kind of, it's one way to look at it is it's kind of like a martial art where you already know how to punch, kick and, and do all this other stuff then you learn the high level techniques that, that, that go with it or, or you practice them in sparring, etc. You know, you grapple and you just continue training that way. So they don't necessarily put that in books. You know, you can't necessarily, um, especially in the olden days, they might have left those components out because they didn't want people to have access to them so easily. You know, there's a lot of traditions that have the perspective that before you can really perform magic and do anything high level, you need to be able to understand and work with energy to be able to open your third eye, essentially, to sense energy, to sense the spirit world, and to have confidence in that ability. You need to be able to enter altered states. And so the methodology section of the book is the largest section, and I go in detail uh, for each of the main elements of 
uh, preliminary magical practice, what I mean by that is uh, the early stages of your magical career, the essential skills that you need to either develop and how, or at least how to train them or what perspective to take when training them. So for example, I will teach you how to meditate. I will teach you how to enter the three primary states of consciousness. I will show you an, a method for creating a chi ball, how you can use that in magic, how you can energize it with your intentions, how to find your core intention, your truest intention, how to pare down your ideas so you can find out what it is you're really trying to accomplish when you use magic. Because magic is always going to follow your truest intention, not what you're saying with your voice. I'm going to show you methods and ideas for dealing with spirits, how they might work, what kind of packs you should make. I'm going to help you create your own magical system of writing, or you can use my own, which is seen in my sigil as usual. Um, you know, help you create one of these, help you to learn how, or you can use my own. Equal, they are equally effective with one another. I will show you simple methods for creating sigils, as well as helping explain and show you my own personal form of, of sigil use, where I use a triangular sheet of paper. Uh, and I do interesting things with it, as you saw there's extra marks on there, besides just the sigil of Malfoss. I will teach you all of these basic things in the methodology section, and for those of you who are a novice, this is going to be, in my personal opinion, as someone who's searched high and low for books that talk about these things, many of them will cover different parts of it, but I think that I have done a very good job of explaining my way of doing things in a way no one else has, or at least they don't cover in, in either the same detail or the same intention. Most people don't really ever explain to you that when you're performing magic, there needs to be emotional, spiritual, psychic content. It's not just speaking words. You have to push energy, both physical energy, that is movement and vocal energy, as well as spiritual energy in the form of, of, of some would call it chi, prana, or life force, your auric egg, whatever you want to call it. You have to be able to manipulate that energy as well as learning how to speak and see and hear in the astral plane on some level and know that it is true. When you're calling a spirit's name, when you are saying, you know, uh, uh, be, uh, you need to be able to intone that, not just vocally, but when you say that it needs to resonate in the astral realm and be usable, uh, not just usable, I mean, but echo throughout the astral realm. So these kinds of things will be explained um, to the best of my ability in a book, short of actually seeing you person to person and helping to train you, this is the best I can do. Lastly, there's the pathworking section, and there's something in there for everybody. Primarily, it's meant for the aspiring novice, but anyone, even advanced people will find some of those rituals useful. You'll find that my ritual methods are fairly simple. You can make them as simple or as complicated as you like because I don't believe that magic is a mechanical system where you have to do X, Y, and Z in terms of you have to say this word, you have to say that word. It's more of a stage play and it's something that is meant to inspire your psychic energy to do what you need it to do, as well as to communicate with the spirit world. Now that doesn't mean that there's never any mechanical elements, it doesn't mean that there's, that there's no such thing as saying the words wrong or anything like that. It just means that not every system requires that you be that precise and mine does not. So you can use this pathworking section and you can keep it as simple or as complex as you wish. You can embellish on it, you can add to it, or you can just use the basic uh, uh, sequence of events that I prescribe, where you need to enter a certain altered mental state, enter a focused state and, and push energy into your intention, re-enter an open state, let go, let everything go. So all of these things are gonna be explained in the pathworking section. And it's going to begin by basically showing you one method, and there's many methods, my method isn't the only one, to establish a relationship with the version of Lucifer that I work with. For those who don't know, and I have to explain this in the book quite a bit, Lucifer is a bit of an enigma because in history there is no character called Lucifer until a certain period after there was not a typo, but not even a mistranslation, but it was a mistranslation of something in the Bible. Up to that point, no one had used the word Lucifer in the context that we use it today. And it eventually inspired or was inspired by Lucifer to create Gustav Doré's imagery of, of Lucifer and in um, uh, um, the Paradise Lost series uh, by, uh, um, pardon me, I'm getting a little, little brain fart, I can't remember the name of the guy, but you'll know what it is, just look up Paradise Lost. Um, to inspire Paradise Lost and all of these other works that do contain the essence of this spirit, if inverted a little bit, made a little bit darker perhaps than this spirit truly is. Lucifer is a spirit of rebellion and light and illumination and liberation and he despises self-lies. He despises when you lie to yourself. Um, he does use syrupy language. He does tend to be either really, really um, 
kind of stern and point out your flaws. Not, not as flaws, though, more like pointing out your self-deception. Or he'll be very syrupy and call you his child or how beautiful you are and all these other things. He likes to butter you up. So this system will guide you through initializing yourself into the system, preparing yourself, finding and creating a sigil for yourself that you can use in magic. It's also a rite that I offer on From the Ashes. I offer a more complex version of that on From the Ashes, but you can perform a very simple version of this yourself. I will show you a method to do so. You will then also be shown <clears throat> a method for consecrating a scrying mirror to Lucifer to use the gateway and a portal to communicate with him until you can establish regular contact without it. Then you will initially initiate yourself with Lucifer and then the nine Goetic Kings, and I will show you a very simple outline for that. I am not going to guide you hand step by step through each uh, of the kings, but I do give you a lot of information from my own grimoire, my own personal grimoire, about each one of those spirits and what I've experienced working with them so that you can fine tune your, your own method to reach them. And I will give you an example ritual to contact King Paimon and to set that ball in motion. Then there's also going to be some rituals in there that are going to be for creation of a ring of power, consecrating scrying balls, creation of a, a smoking or tea mixture for astral visions. Um, there's going to be a bonus content section which uh, has a hidden chapter in there which is essentially um, the right that I normally sell, the, the, the sacrifice of regret to the Sin Eater Azazel, because he wasn't very um, eager to perform that right with me on video for people. He wants people to do that themselves. So uh, at his discretion, I am, you know, his require, request and requirement, I put it in the book, a version of it that you can use to begin your path with Azazel to help him help you get rid of your regrets and sensations of self-loathing over something you may have done so that you can get a blessing in return. Then there's also a, uh, a much more complex bit of bonus material about Malfos and acquiring a familiar either through him or with any of the Goetic spirits that provide familiars. So this book I think will be of great value to a lot of especially beginners. It's about 255 pages. It's uh, close to 157,000 words. It's a very thick, um, not as thick as like Modern Magic or something, I think that's the name of it. But it's, it's re very thick, it's very comprehensive. I've used dual columns on each page, so it's easy to read. There are illustrations, there are photographs, there's all my sigil work, there's all these things, examples, diagrams, etc., that you can use to hopefully propel yourself, especially if you're a novice or a neophyte, into a state of at least intermediate level very, um, very easily. You don't need anything else necessarily unless you want to. Uh, it also encourages you to do your own research and to create your own methods and symbols and ideas. Rather than just using mine, I want to give you basically your training wheels and then you're going to go from there because as I say in, early on in the book, I can teach you magic but I'm teaching you my magic. What you need to do is find your own magic and one of the best ways to do that is to begin the path such as this and then ask the spirits to help guide you and they will guide you, your spirit guides will guide you towards doing the rest. Now, I'm going to um, put a link in the description on where you can buy this. It's also, you can find all of this on my personal Facebook page, um, you know, uh, 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 Demon Sorcerer Thorn on Facebook or Become the Maelstrom on, uh, on Facebook. I'll put links to that all in the description. Uh, and I'm also going, if time permits, I think I'm going to read just the introduction for you um, in a minute, uh, you know, off camera. I'm going to read this for you guys. So you can hear the introduction, hear my writing style, and decide whether this is for you or not. So if you're enjoying this, if you enjoy my content, and you've been looking for a way to support me, but you can't afford a ritual or a consultation, and you really want to know the basic secrets, not everything, because I can't put it all in a book, but all the basics of what I do, it's right here. If you want to get to know me on a spiritual level, a lot of it's right here. So there will be more books forthcoming. If you enjoy this, if you're looking for a way to support me, it's only going to be $35 as a paperback. And maybe eventually I'll do an ebook version. We'll see how it sells on paperback. I think when it comes to grimoires and books of magic, a solid physical book is a much more useful thing because it's, it's a large enough book. It's a 10 by 8 book. You can lay it flat on a table. You can put it on an altar and you can use it directly right out of the book if you wish. You can photocopy the sigils for your use if you wish. So... I really feel like a book is a better alternative to uh, having it like on a, you know, a reading device, a, you know, a, a Kindle device or, or anything like that. So if you guys really want to support me, this is an easy way. I'm not going to make a killing on this, but it does help me. Every little bit you want to do, every little bit you can support me by buying my products or buying my services encourages me to do better and encourages me to expand what I'm doing. 
and to uh, become, you know, become the maelstrom. All right, guys. In the meantime, I'll check you later. This is a reading excerpt from Become the Maelstrom. This is the introduction. I've always felt that introductions should be personal in some way, perhaps autobiographical in nature, somehow drawing the reader into a web of events that led to the writing of the book. I promise you, it won't be very long or boring. This first part of the book is presented as a series of essays, each one intended to align you more and more with my specific personal gnosis about magic. The most important chapter is the Trinity of Self. If you read nothing else, read that section. Read it twice, read it thrice. But make sure you do read it, for that is perhaps the most important piece of specific personal gnosis I will include in this work. If you read nothing else, you would have read the fundamental key of how I do what I do. Everything else is just a prop. Everything else is a prop that is used in the performance art that is the Trinity of Self. After this will be a more specific section about the mechanics of the way magic works in various activities. And lastly, will be the example spells, pathworking, and related nuts and bolts rituals and methods. I say my specific personal gnosis because I believe magic is a subjective experience in an extreme way. More so than almost any other phenomenon in our lives, magic is personal. What has been shared throughout history on the subject has been largely lost to time. And we have very little way of knowing if the information and grimoires, the ancient tomes of magic we have found are at all relatable or reliable or trustworthy, save through personal experience. Indeed, it's entirely possible that the sources we can access today about magic from antiquity aren't even the best possible sources that have existed. Perhaps they burn in the fire of Alexandria or were bombed in one of the great wars. Maybe the little old man on the top of the mountain took his ultimate secrets to his grave? Or maybe far better ones still exist, locked away in some secret vault of some noble family or elite order. As Bell once told me, some things are not to be known. It is for this reason that I decided that my own practical and personal experience and expression in magic was worthy of the light of day. Not because it is better or worse. I am indeed arrogant, but not in that way. Rather because I believe magic is an art form, and like all art, it is for nothing if it is not shared. For I had found my own truths in my own art, and the methods that work for me, and I found them in the vacuum of relative ignorance, drawn forth from the depths of my intuition, with only a scant glance at the books or works of others. This isn't to say it is somehow better because of that. I could be wrong about everything that I do and believe. However, it is authentic, and it's honest. It's from the source of personal practice. It isn't second-hand gnosis. It isn't something created by a person taking the manuscript of a dead eccentric and giving it new meaning. No. This is the mature child's iteration of a child's fanciful magic scribbles on the floor of his nursery. The strange arrangement of blocks and toys and the arcane symbols conjuring up reality that only other children can see. Logic only the mind of the child can appreciate. Indeed, growing up in the 80s and 90s before the prolific spread of the internet, and the scores of ancient manuscripts and modern interpretations available in PDF format for free. The only magic we had available to us was what was for sale in the, sp in the spirituality section of the local bookstore. I noticed as I progressed in my own magical arts that I cared very little for the things that were called magic by others. In most cases, all they really taught you was a bunch of dogmatic gobbledygook or just a rehashing of astrology, which nothing wrong with that, or worse yet, extensions of religious faith. I saw them as just extensions of religion, as not being true magic, but just different ways to worship some higher power, to beg on the power of God or nature to grant us our desperate wishes, like an ant commanding an elephant to somehow convince the queen of the hive to give it a better paying job in the nest. There was no power in this. It was just a new way to kneel, and I do not kneel. Even when I bow, I keep my eyes locked on the object of my respect. Truth be told, I can't really decide when I consciously began my journey into dark magic. It certainly wasn't those years in the bookstore. I already had something of an idea of what I was doing by then. But as of late, I've been reminded of a long forgotten memory. And it sticks out in a funny way that a memory does when it has been repressed long enough and just kind of pops up out of nowhere. And you have to take a minute to think about it, asking yourself why you forgot it. And how is it possible to remember it so vividly after all these years? 
No, this might not have been when it started, but really it started much earlier than this. However, this story more than some others has a special significance. And for you, my dear reader, perhaps it will be compelling in its own way. Maybe you'll relate to my own desperation and need. Maybe that is why you hold this very book in your hand now. Maybe, maybe you're already an accomplished sorcerer, and this story will remind you of your own very first time dealing with a spirit. This memory is about me as a young boy, calling upon the devil in the bathroom stall down the hall from my third grade class, begging Satan to help wherever God had not yet dared. I was weak. I was pathetic. I was the fat new kid in school, the kid with the smelly clothes, the kid who never did his homework because my home life was a nightmare of constant drunken fights and cognitive abuse. There I was with my pants down around my ankles, we weeping silently, raging impotently at the cruelty of the God that I was taught to ask for salvation, a God who might allow an innocent child to suffer, all because some woman ate an apple, allowing me to be punished and tortured just because I existed. God wasn't listening to me. I had to be the one to save myself. I wanted to kill them, to tear them apart with my teeth and claws. I wanted to be like Carrie or the American werewolf, or maybe a vampire. Yeah, just not some silly Dracula kind, something more cool and powerful. Little did my parents or anyone else know, I had an adult level book about werewolves that I had stolen from the library in town. I remember reading it over and over, wishing I could be one. I'd be one of the good ones, I reasoned. I'll only eat the bad people, I promise, please. I begged and begged. I read the part about how different people believed they could become werewolves. I wanted it to be real. I found several good examples of spells and rituals I could try. But most called for crazy shit. Human fat from an unbaptized male child rendered into a paste to be rubbed into a wolf pelt and worn on a full moon. Yeah, I know, that sounds kind of Hollywood witchcraft to me too. Another, was a simple, was, another one was simple enough. Make a deal with the devil, sell my soul or some other precious thing in exchange for power or the powerful curse of a werewolf. That was it. That was the one. I had read those two or three paragraphs over and over and drew the picture of the mighty black demon wolf I would become several times every day till it was firm in my mind. I was utterly obsessed. The passage in the book talked about how if the petitioner really begged the devil to appear and was at the moment of true weakness, he would appear. And he would appear as any of several forms, one of which stuck out in my mind, that of a shadowy man in black with black skin and a brimmed hat, with the faint smell of brimstone, of course, and the cloven hoof of a goat. So there I was in the bathroom stall, having suffered yet another terrible ordeal at home, and it was followed by an equally bad day at my new school among these kids who hated me, just for being the fat new kid who didn't play sports. I begged Satan, Lucifer, any devil, anyone that would hear me to give me true power to make me a monster, to turn me into a werewolf, or give me whatever evil power it would take to destroy those who hurt me and regain power for myself, I would give anything. I wouldn't go to hell, but I would give anything. Anything but my soul. I didn't want to be tricked like all the people in the movies, but I was desperate. I would have given anything at that moment. For I, like a great many people who are attracted to the dark forces of the occult, do so out of a sense of helplessness and a need for power, money, or some other thing which we feel we need to save us. I remember sitting in that stall, praying for the devil to come, weeping his name in tears. It must have been a good 15 minutes, maybe half an hour, and nobody came. It was deathly silent, just the drip of a leaky faucet. Drip, drip, drip. I closed my eyes to try and calm myself, and my mind was filled with the image of the hallway outside the bathroom. It was a very vivid daydream, as my mind focused on it, I began to see a man with dead eyes and jet black skin smiling to me. Tipping a black hat, he had cloven hooves and he was in the hall just outside the bathroom. He was coming in and opening the door. At that moment, the actual door burst open and the teacher yelled at me, breaking my apparent trance, startling me back to horrid reality. I will never really forget him, nor the gist of his angry shouts. For fuck's sake! First you interrupt the class with your stories about how the other kid called you a name, then you beg to use the bathroom, and now you're still in here after half an hour? How big a shit are you taking, you fat little worm? Yeah, he really spoke to me that way. He hated me. He hated how I openly defied him, how I refused to be threatened into doing extra homework to make up for what I wasn't doing at home. I hated him for not believing me when I would tell him what home was like. Well, all I could do was dry my eyes, stand up, 
clean myself up and go back to class. I was still powerless. Even the devil wasn't going to save me or even give me the dignity of revenge. Had I known then what I know now, I might have known that that image of the black man in the hall was likely far more than just an illusion of a tormented child's mind. The teacher's abrupt entrance and horrible words to me were too synchronistic to be mere coincidence. More than likely, I had called my first spirit. I had asked for power. Perhaps it was just a coincidence or a coincidental daydream, or perhaps power answered. After several decades of unbelievable experiences, having been the leader of a small cult, to having a total inversion of my belief and becoming a hard skeptic, to having a complete 180 degree shift in belief yet again to reawaken to magic, feeling very much like a vampire that was asleep in a tomb, going to sleep early in the millennium, only to wake up 18 years later and seeing all had changed. From being spiritually blind to once again seeing shadows in the corners of my eyes, even now as I write this and having no fear at their presence. So much like black cats playing in the dark corners of my home, they watch my family sleep. They sit in awe and whisper to me the gnosis of this work. Always around the witching hour, when everyone else is most deeply asleep, the spirits rise, and I sit alone and write, and conjure, and scheme. At last, I am a lord of shadow. I now know and admit and declare that I have that power. That power is mine. It wasn't given to me or taught to me by some priest or magus. I took it like a thief in the night, and now I am free. Of course, I realize now I was always free. I realize now that every pain, every struggle, everything done to me was done by myself, done to bring me to this very moment where I finally am the powerful monster I always wished I was. And as promised, I only eat the bad people. Now here I am giving the methods I use to do just that. This book is just one way, one of many valid ways. I promise you that it is not my intention for it to become your way, more like a gateway to your own path. This book will merely point you in the right direction so you can find your own way, your own path to liberation and power and magic. May you be the lord or lady of your own shadows or a master or mistress of your own dark dream. But be warned, magic is not a thing to dabble in. You either commit to doing it and learning it or you will fail, or even worse, you'll succeed. And in that success, you'll be powerless and at the mercy of forces beyond your comprehension. The shadows are always watching, waiting, looking for a fool like the one I once was, to drag them down into the depths and devour. Of course, if they hadn't done all this to me, I wouldn't be the monster I am now, and you wouldn't be reading this book. So come with me if you wish. Walk with me a while, only for as long as you find what you need. Let's explore the dark path together. Just make sure you mind the shadows.